Welcome to this session. I am Professor P.C. Basak of Management. I will be delivering a lecture on Total Quality Management. So let us first define the, what is the quality. Quality means the meeting customer requirement stated or implied. Sometimes the re customer requirement is not mentioned clearly or there is no need to mention in that way like if you have a fan it is obvious that while fan is rotating it should not make any sound so it need not to be re written statement that it should not make sound so nowhere the fan manufacturing company they mention that it will not make sound it is understood that it is no it will not make any sound that we call the implied and other things are stated through the totality of the product or service. Now this customer requirement will be fulfilled through the totality of a product or service. We are concerned both the product that is manufacturing industry as well as the service sector. By conforming to a specified standard, all manufacturing product has been standardized. So that must be adhered to that or conforming to that specified standard at a given time over a period of time. The customer expectation is that the product or service should fulfill the stated requirement not that only today. For a periodical durability should be high and for a long period this requirement should be fulfilled by this product or service. That's how we mention at a given time over a period of time. At a price customer can afford and is willing to pay. That is also, a, so cost is also an important factor for while we are defining the quality. Now quality is also called the fitness for use. This fitness for use means that customer consider it is fit for their use. If customer thinks it is good for them, then it is always good. There is nobody, nobody should think otherwise. So ultimately customer is the king and they should decide the quality of the product. So what characteristics? Quality can be defined again with the different types of characteristics. So important characteristic is the technological characteristics of the product, which is defined by the strength, hardness and surface finish. In case of the manufacturing product, these are important factors, strength, hardness and surface finish. Psychological, taste, status, beauty. This is the psychological factor. It is difficult to standardize these things. For some, for in a restaurant if you go for eating, taking food, for somebody that restaurant may be very good, but for another person, taste may be very bad. So it, there is no proper standardization of all these things. Status, beauty, it cannot be standardized. Like toothpaste, there are almost all toothpaste compositions may be same, but some people prefer some brand, some other people prefer some other brand. Same thing is with all these perfumes and other things. There cannot be the standardization in that way. Then time oriented characteristics, reliability, maintainability and availability. Reliability means how long it will last without failure. Maintainability is another factor from reliability associated with the reliability and availability in the maintenance function, the availability of the equipment, that is very important. So these are all interrelated phenomena or interrelated factors that can be calculated and defined, the reliability, maintainability and availability. So whenever a capital investment is there, like any machineries or plant and machineries and equipments, 
somebody is purchasing that concern organization will be very very concerned about the reliability maintainability and availability same thing when we purchase the freeze or ac we are also very much considered uh, about these re factors contractual guarantee provision any equipments or any product or service that you are purchasing you expect certain guaranteed provision in a in very in various forms that the supplier or original equipment manufacturer should provide to the customer that is called the guaranteed provision warranty there are many other such kind of things and ethical courtesy and honesty in service sector these two factors is very very important when you go to the restaurant you don't go only for the eating the food because same food may be available in other another places so they are the courtesy of the waiter or waitresses servers all these things are very very important factor in uh, service sector like the bank bank is a service sector the people is working in the bank how they behave with the customers courtesy honesty these are very important factor in the service sector so all these factor technological psychological time oriented contractual and ethical in a combination of these five factors are very very important and some of such factors exist in manufacturing product some is very dominant play a domain dominant role in case of the service sectors quality has also many dimensions this dimension means by which factors manipulating the factors we can implant quality in the product or services first thing is that quality of design for any manufacturing any product or for delivery any service you have to design the product or service now what are the factors that influences the quality of design quality of market research through market research we try to try to understand the customer perception about that product quality of concepts and quality of specification once we know the customer preferences or perception about that product then only a concept can be developed about the design of a product and once you decide decide the concept or develop the concept of the good concept that can be converted into a specification so one is related with another the way it is mentioned that quality of design has a three factors quality of market research quality of concept and quality of specification unless you know we go from the top to down this is the hierarchical level in this unless we know about the customer then how can i develop a concept customer perception about that product or service so market research is first then quality of concept that has to be developed by the organization who is interested in delivery interested in creating interrelationship with the customers and then they have to develop the quality of specification also similarly quality of conformance it is a technological conformance manpower and management that is quality of conformance that can be delivered through this technological capability of the organization manpower capability of the organization management capability of the organization these three together as a whole will deliver the quality of conformance availability again reliability maintainability and logistical support reliability of the delivery reliability maintainability there are many products for that after sale service is also very important of course after sale service itself as an industry is growing but still there are many initial period say 6 months or 1 year we expect that original manufacturer should provide this that's why there is a system of amc and all maintenance contract in computer industry it was there earlier today it is not there because this amc a separate group of industries has already developed to de uh, to deliver this amc but logistical support it is the duty of the organization one of the glaring example is that you see the telco and fiat nobody is telling that fiat cars are bad 
technologically it is one of the superior car but still it could not do well very well in our country in comparison to others like telco tata motors or maruti they could not do well the basic reason is their logistical support they didn't have the good logistical support for maintaining their car and you see the advertisement given by the maruti a group of young people they reach in a desert and they are asking so the people in the desert they are feeling that they are looking for the cold drinks and in fact then they ask that is there any maruti authorized dealer and the peoples of that locality they are pointing towards in every direction it is an advertisement given by maruti and it is true also wherever you go in the our country you will find the maruti's uh, authorized dealer or repair centers and that is not true with the fiat so what fiat has done to improve their logistic support they are in contract with the tata motors so that tata motors will deliver the logistical supports to the fiat cars now there is a possibility their performance may increase in the or they could get the more market share in the in indian market apart from this one of the professor of harvard business school professor david garvin he has identified he wrote an article way back in end of 80s about the strategic quality dimensions and he has identified the eight dimensions such dimensions in the strategic quality dimensions which he termed as first is the performance performance of the product or services features conformance aesthetics reliability durability serviceability perceived quality that is also an important factor perceived quality what is that perceived quality it is in customer mind that is ingrained in their mind for a long period for any kinds of product that this product will be good like one such things is that suiting main suiting remonts you ask anybody majority will tell remont is good but it may not be true quality wise other men shootings manufacturer like say gwalior rayan digjam ocm they are also may be in the same quality but majority of the people's thinks that remont's quality is the best so that is called this perceived quality so these are the strategic dimension of course the all these things can be changed with the conscious attempt or strategic attempt so this we call the strategic dimension because ultimately any organization they are in the business for making money and this can be organization can make money only if the customer if their product or service has a demand or if they have the good kind of customer reliable and constant demand in the market of course growth is also there if there is a growth that will be better but at least two things should be there that grow market share should remain same and there should be repeat purchase in some of the product all these things will be possible only when the organization thinks or put their product or service in comparison to their competitors strategically by considering all these eight dimensions it is not necessarily that all these products every organization will compete all these eight dimensions but at least some of these dimensions and they have to find out that what their competitors are doing in which dimension their competitors are better or they are better in comparison to their competitor and how they can improve the product performance or service performance in comparison to the competitor by manipulating some of these eight factors then comes the cost of the quality for everything providing this 
product or service, the organization is incurring certain amount of cost. How we are dividing? What are the cost components? And that we call this total cost of the quality. And it is a very important factor to remain competitive in the market. First is that cost of control or conformance. It has the two constitutive components prevention cost and appraisal cost. Appraisal means you have the laboratory and other things you are measuring, like for any manufacturer, engineering manufacturing goods, let's say a motor car. Every component has a dimension, strength, hardness, dimension, surface finish, all these things. That has to be whether in the, at the time of manufacturing or the supply, even the supplier brings the bought out, that we call the bought out components. For that also whether the, it is conforming to the requirement that has to be measured. These we call the appraisal cost. So for measuring all such things, different industry requires the different kinds of laboratory, metrological laboratory and many other things, equipments. And one is the prevention cost by providing training, by improving the technological capability, machines, tools, material, these are all the prevention cost that organization has to incur for manufacturing the product or providing the service in a best method. Cost of failure or non-conformance. There will be the failure also and that should be as minimum as possible. That, that has the three component. One is that internal failure, external failure and other one is the cost of exceeding requirement. Internal failure means suppose a product is, been, is being manufactured and it has the four different processes and after two process it gets failed because before starting the another process there will be sudden check that is called the internal failure so either it has to it is rejected that means and it has to be reworked or it will be completely rejected if it can be rectified by remachining or rework, it will be done. But every such activities that incur certain amount of cost, that we call the internal failure. So either it will be scrapped or some rework will be done. Or if it is at the finished product, some degrade, downgrade will be done. That is, that means that you know that these VIP and other things, they have the four grades of VIP luggage A, B, C, D and cost wise also it is different. A grade is the top quality. So it has reached at the finished product level and at that time it has been found there is some defect in that product. So it is not rejected completely but cost price has been lowered and that is called the downgradage. There are many companies they have this kind of system even in the shoe business also they have the second and other so these are all certain defects have been found customer may not be able to tell what is that defect but the manufacturer they know and they on their own they made in that way so that is called this internal failure external failure after delivering the product then there are failure so either you are exchanging the product completely if it is within stipulated time or you are providing the spare parts at your own cost and that is called the external failure and cost of exceeding requirement. You have designed the product that design quality with the certain things and at that time market research has not been done properly. So you have designed then what is required for the and certain features or certain characteristics certain quality has been implanted in that product in such a, in that way that even without that your product could have been sold in the market and price and other things doesn't justify that thing that is called the cost of exceeding requirement maybe you are again advertisement also you are might be spending too much in the advertisement which may not be required these all these things called this cost of exceeding requirement 
so how to express the quality cost per direct labor hours per direct labor cost per rupee of standard manufacturing cost and per rupee of sales these are the some of the indicators it is not the exhaustive indicators i have just quoted on the four different kinds of indicators by which usually industry they express the cost of the quality there are one can find out their own method or develop their own method for expressing that quality of the cost so next is the when to perform the quality control inspection upon receipt of the raw material before costly and irreversible operation whenever we receive the raw material see we have the manufacturing so let us come to that manufacturing organization if we draw a schematic diagram there will be the supplier the input side and output side in input side there will be the supplier they are supplying the basic raw material or finished components which will go directly to sub assembly or assembly stage and there is the output side some conversion will be done in that that we call the transformation activities a manufacturing unit will be doing that manufacturing uh, transformation activities and then it will be in the output side the finished product has been made and it has to reach to the customer so every stage there can be the inspection or quality control inspection so upon receipt of the raw material is like that so before costly and irreversible operation whenever there is every operation i incur certain amount of cost any costly operation before doing that it should be if it is not the first process then it should be checked that whether this should be done or not if it is already this in a bad product why to do it so for that to prevent such kind of things this will be done before costly and irreversible operations before work that could hide the defects upon completion of the product that we come to the delivery side that is output side upon completion of the product before stocking high value items any high value items maybe that supplier brought it it is a bought out components which will go directly to the assembly you are not doing any processing and in fact most of the automobile or say consumer durables today the nature of business is like that they manufacture very less proportion of their product most of the things will be outsourced and that will go to the manufacturing unit either directly to the sub assembly or assembly stage so before start this they also maintain certain amount of stock before stocking high value items there must be checking and before shipment to the customer these are the places where usually the quality inspection will be done and usually we don't do the 100% inspection we have the methodologies for that that will come later on now all this series that quality expresses so far what we have expressed that is regarding this how the quality function definition of the quality various dimension of the quality and where inspection oriented quality control that usually we do now these theories have developed over a long period of time from the industrialization gradually we have come to that stage so development of the control of quality that theory how it has developed and how its characteristics have been changed that is shown in this slide initial work arrangement now as we have the factory organization work progressively de skilled that is through division of the labor and then we have the again a continuous process so every stage we have the different kinds of thing because before the invention of this quality control methodologies still we have certain amount of quality system to maintain the quality in the product that we call the initial work arrangements here quality embodies in the craft or work process by the craftsman this is done before this was the system before the invention of the 
factory production systems still we have the quality but our scale of operation is very low and it was usually the craftsman oriented manufacturing systems small scale manufacturing systems and quality used to embodies in the craft or work process by craftsman himself today also if you go to the cottage industries or many other crafts take the muradabad brass type of things brass product or paintings or say saharanpur wood, wooden crafts all these things these are it is not in the mass production we do not call it as a mass production but craftsmen they themselves implant the quality in their product but the moment we move to the mass production we have the factory production systems our volume of production increases we organize the factory production system through division of labor that we call this work progressively de skills that means division of labor means that one worker or one mechanic is expert in either one type of operation or two types of operation that mechanic is not expert expertise or expert in all kinds of operation that is required for the complete production of that product as it happens to be in the time of the craftsman but factory production system has been organized in that with the de-skilling the laborer that means mask through division of labor so there we felt the need for quality checking so what we have done at that time we have introduced the inspection system and in 30s decade we have developed the statistical quality control theories and then we have this quality assurance methods this used to from 1930s onwards when we have these things although we have the factory production systems in 19th century itself and statistical quality control theory have been developed in 20th century 30s decades of the 20th centuries so from 1930s up to 1980s it used to continue in that way then the japanese product they displaces all european and american products so people started thinking that what went wrong with the europe and america that they could not compete with the japanese product and it has been found out that we call it is a continuous process improvement so quality embodies in the work process through cooperation and team building japanese have done this miracle by combining both this approach craftsman approach as well as the industrialization approach and they call it is a continuous improvement and this continuous improvement is possible through cooperation and team building quality assurance what do you call this quality because these terms must be very clear quality assurance quality control product or service quality quality assurance embraces all activities and functions concerned with attainment of quality so design of specification quality management quality control are part of the quality assurance so what do you see that quality control is a part of the quality assurance this quality assurance means the manufacturer or service provider is attempting to provide to assure the quality of the product of service to the customer so quality control is one of the component of the quality assurance the aspects of quality assurance that concerns the practical means of securing product or service quality as set out in the specification then comes the product or service quality the totality of features and characteristics of a product 
or service that bear on its ability to satisfy stated or implied need. As we have mentioned at the beginning, while defining the quality, that every product or service has a customer requirement through stated or implied needs. So, product or service quality will look up to So, hierarchy, the interrelationship among these are like this. At the top, we have the quality assurance, then we have the quality control, and then we have a product or service quality. So, quality assurance is the, as a whole, holistic approach for providing or delivering and maintaining product quality, product or service quality through quality control systems. Then comes the TQM revolution. We used to, we have the organization, quality control department in manufacturing industries in that way, inspection oriented quality control. And then gradually we have shifted to other areas that what we call this continuous improvement system. Let us just look at the things, how it happens that World Air 1, WW1 and WW2, that is the World Air 2. Between these, we have developed the statistical method applied to the manufacturing. Walter Stewart, who, are, who was working at that time with a team in Bell Laboratories, they have invented, he along with his team, two prominent persons are there, or member of his team. One is this W. Edward Deming, you must have heard about this because Japan has constituted, installed that one prize in the name of the Deming, that is called the Deming Prize. And many of our, some of our Indian companies, they have received this Deming Award. One is Sundaram Clayton, this is one of the firms, there are many, but most of the firms are belongs to the South India. And another person is the PC Mahalanavish, Indian, who has established Indian Statistical Institute. These two persons are also the team led by Walter Stewart. So in 1930s decades, they have invented, applied the statistical methodology for maintaining the, for maintaining and controlling the quality of the manufactured product which they termed as statistical process control or statistical quality control. So post 90s, 1940s and 1950s, in, increased emphasis on process improvement. How this process of conversion, as we mentioned, that manufacturing or service, it has this conversion process, it has input and output process. So, the process improvement that has been given more emphasis and the people's responsible for uplifting these things are Deming and Zuran. Deming assisted General MacArthur for Japanese quality revolution and that has a, a post second order period. In 1960s, Deming, Zuran and Feigenbaum, they have developed the total quality control emerges in USA mainly and Feigenbaum has written a book published in way back in 1963 that total in the name of total quality control. At that time we never used to call it as a total quality management. But his idea is that a holistic approach, the starting from the supplier designed to delivery, everything has to be taken care of if you are you have to be good in your business. In 1960s and 70s, Japan emerged from 19, in 1960s, in fact, nobody used to purchase any Japanese product. Like what it was in 1970s, nobody used to purchase any Indian car outside India. Same thing was true in 1950s and early 60s about the Japanese product. Even up to end of 60s, we used to bring car from Europe 
mainly from Europe and America. Today we don't bring any car from the Europe. And in 1960s, 70s, Japan emerges as the world quality leader. By 70, end of 70s, it has been established that Japanese products are better than many European and American products. In 60s, nobody has heard about the companies that Japan will provide or manufacture good camera. At that time, camera used to come from the Germany. Today, everybody has forgotten about the Japanese, German camera. Everybody is looking for the Japanese camera or the even Korean camera. So this is the world, a phenomenal change in the world market about such kind of product like automobiles, then entertainment electronics like radio, 2-in-1, VCD, and then camera. All these products today, everybody is, throughout the world, Japan has cap captured the market. So who are the people responsible for such phenomenal improvement in the quality of the Japanese product? They are Deming, an American, who were invited to give lecture to the Japanese managers and the shop floor people in early 1950s. Demings and Juran. Then Ishikawa, and Taguchi, both these fellows, they are also, they are Japanese. But Deming and Juran has contributed a lot for the Japanese develop, product development, quality improvement. And that's why JUAC, Japanese Union of Scientists and Engineers, they have installed the annual Deming Award in the name of, to honor the Deming and which is considered one of the best prize in the quality management in the world. Fortunately, some of the Indian companies have received that prize. So, 1960s-70s, another American, Philip Crosby, he wrote a book, Quality is Free. He has propagated the idea there cannot be any acceptable quality level. We have the concept that acceptable quality level, say 1% or 2% defect. So, he started propagating the idea that why there should be defect. Defect should be zero defect movement in USA. So, 80s and 90s, Deming, Juran, Taguchi, Ishikawa and Crosby, they have the contiguum emerges, emerges in the developed nations. And 19 onwards, Indian firms are slowly adopting the TQM philosophy. Firms like Sundaram Clayton, Crompton Grips, Rane Brakes, Sona Steering, etc. have already been awarded, coveted, Deming Award by JUAC. So what changes we have seen from in the quality management from 1930s to till the end of the last century. That we have, ma I have mentioned that from to, first it was a reactive, that means you produce the defect, in that is the characteristics of inspection oriented quality methodologies, that whether after the manufacturing you are inspecting whether you have produced any defect or not. That means whatever has happened that has occurred, Damages has occurred. Now you are trying to identify the damage. That is called the reactive type of approach. But question is that why to produce the defect at all? Why don't you produce the right at the first time? So there is no defect or zero defect. That is the movement that from reactive to proactive. You take certain action in such a way that you don't produce any defective goods at all or defective process at all. So question, naturally a valid question has been raised that why to produce defect and then you are try to, trying to find out that defect has occurred and trying to eliminate those defects and that incur more cost than detection and inspection. Naturally if you have the reactive approach, you have the detection and inspection. You have to detect 
through inspection. But if you have the proactive approach, that is a prevention, you take the action before that thing occurs, so that that bad thing doesn't occur at all. Then acceptable quality level, we call it is AQL. In any statistical quality control, that AQL will be there. Certain amount of defect we always allowed. 1%, percent, 5%, 2%, 5%. Of course, 5% is very, very high. But in India, many manufacturing concern, their, their uh, defect rate is higher than 5%. And from that, we are trying for the zero defect. Blame placing. So our whole purpose of detection and inspection is to identify at what stage of the manufacturing or what stage of the process that defect has occurred and penalize the people associated with that bad process. That means where there is an incentive system for improving the productivity, their incentive will be less. That is called the blame plus placing. But all these things happen due to certain reasons. So in case of the today we do not call, our purpose is not to identify the person responsible for that. Whether as a cooperative approach and team building approach, whether we can solve the problem. There is a problem and problem has to be solved. It is not the question the way penalize this person. By penal because by penalizing the per person, you are not improving your system. Of course, there are some defect in the system and that has to be corrected. That we call the problem solving. Earlier, we have the idea that if you improve the quality, cost also will include. That's why we have that philosophy, cost or quality. But today, both the things perform separately. Why we have the cost or quality? Because two things are in opposite direction. If you improve the quality, cost will increase. Today, we don't tell in that way. We tell that through continuous improvement, continuously you can increase the quality and continuously, simultaneously, continuously you can decrease the cost. That's why cost and quality. We don't tell today cost or quality. Quality cost more and quality cost less. That's why the Philip Crosby has written that book, Quality is Free, in 1979. And he was the chief quality director in ITT USA. Meet the specification, that is the conformance to the specification. And another is a continuous improvement. Today we call it is a continuous improvement. Schedule fast. In the old approach, that your due date for that every product has a due date, or even the component has the due date, because you have the we have this organization, manufacturing organization. It is like that. You have the assembly, sub assembly. If you go backward, assembly where the finished product is there, then sub assembly, then component. So everybody has a schedule. Schedule fast. Then we have another. But today we have the quality fast. Quality department has only quality problem. It was identified like that. But today, or say from Feigenbaum's day, we call it is the R&D, purchasing, marketing, operations have quality problem. Everybody has a quality problem. If you have to retain the customer, market share, your quality from the design to delivery has to be maintained. Subordinate to management team. To earlier it was subordinate to management team. Today we call part of management team. And always in manufacturing industry was dominated by the engineers. So they used to think that quality is technical. Today we don't call quality as a technical. It is only a one component of the quality. We call quality as a managerial problem. And that needs to be solved. Over. Okay, we end it here.